Welcome back everybody to Rose Mauling with Lisa. As you know, this is a channel dedicated to the wonderful art of rose mauling. And I hope you've all been well out there and uh, I welcome you to my home away from home studio, which is at my parents' place and we're fortunate enough to be able to spend some time together. All right, so welcome back to the dollar horse that I was painting in Norwegian rose mauling. So a little review is, as you can see, this is painted in blues, which is wonderful and I'm going to detail it today. So we have our basic C strokes that are here and our S strokes that come off. My next video, I'm actually going to do, um, I think a stroke work video. I haven't done one in a while. So we have the S, nice long one off here, an S here with a little C's, a little C off the back, a C here, a C here, a C here, S, S, S. So all the basic formations are here. Now I did mention, and somebody was kind enough to, to call me out on this. Um, I did mention in my last video that there were, I had to wipe it down in vinegar, which is a wonderful cleaning, um, natural cleaning um, fluid that you can use, obviously. Um, I mentioned about oils. So the oils that were on this piece is not oil paint, but oils from my fingers. So I had handled this piece quite a few times since I had base coated it because I was going to start it and then not start it and start it and not start it and finally I started it and then the paint was speeding up. So be careful about handling your pieces too much. And thank you to, so much to um, the wonderful person that um, made sure I mentioned that to me so that I should clarify on that. All right, so I'm detailing with warm white Joe Sonia paint. I'm using my Jackie Shaw 10-0 liner, which I love to use and unfortunately is no longer in um, uh, production. So we're just going to give this lovely dollar horse a little love here. So we'll see if I get interrupted and everybody's upstairs and I'm down and hiding in the basement right now while I, I do this. And isn't it nice I actually have a space where I can continue. So I'm normally traveling with my uh, my work. I've got it down to a bit of a science with packing everything. So let's just pull these nice little stroke work around here. So again, even with my stroke work, everything is based on C's. All right, a little C there. And S's. So I'm coming off the back of this S and I'm going to pull it around. Let's pull around this way and this way. I love these dollar horses. They're made by a gentleman named Mike Lusk in Wisconsin. And I know I had that, I'm pretty sure I had that in the notes from my prior video on this. And I had hoped to get another video done last week, so I'm a little behind. But you know what? With the way life has been lately, you could only take it one day at a time, and whatever you can do, you work on it from there. Actually, in the in the meantime, I was very fortunate to um, uh, have a number of pieces I was finishing up for for people, and I was teaching a class, and that's a fun thing through Zoom. So, I will say, living through uh, these interesting times have definitely added to the inventiveness of how you share your work. So I thank you again for everybody who who has subscribed and follows me. And, uh, you know, please look. There's so many wonderful artists out there that are putting out great work, not only in rose modeling, but in so many other art forms. I love doing cross-hatching. Cross-hatching is so much fun to do. Now, the nice thing with this brush is you can see... I think, can you see how really thin this brush is? But yet, remember I've talked about the pressure you push on the brush. So I can keep, and because I, when I look, and don't mind, my palette is very messy right now. I've kept this palette alive for a while. Again, this is a wet palette, so it has a sponge underneath that I can keep wet. Um, so as you can see, my palettes aren't always perfect. In fact, most of the time they're not perfect. So. But by loading the brush and getting it to a point, I can get a very thin line. But when I put the pressure down on my brush, 
and pull it around. I can make this as thin as I want or even as thick as I want. Let's bring this S stroke around here and pull it around. Perfect. There we go. Let's do a little bit this way. All right. And I'm just going to keep working my way around. Now, I will, I haven't painted the other side of this guy yet. So I will, and I don't know if I have my transfer paper with. I'll have to see, but I have, I'm going to do a little video on how I get my design on the other side so they match. So remember, I painted this one freehand. But obviously, when you have something with two sides, you want them to match. So the second side, I will put a basic pattern, a transfer pattern. I have an interesting way of doing that, so a little teaser for how I'll do, do that with chalk and transfer paper. Um, but you want them to match, so you want to get it as close as possible that way. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing with the leg yet, so I'll come back to the leg. All right, add a little bit here. So this is the Telemark style of rose balling. And uh, obviously, dollar horses themselves are a Swedish tradition. So I'm kind of blending two heritages here. Um, though I am uh, both on both sides of my family. They come from Norway, as does my husband's. Um, but I have a lot of Swedish family, which is wonderful. So it's nice to have all the blends as, well, I can't tell you how many different nationality, cultures, everything within our family. It's wonderful. It really is. Absolutely wonderful. You know, and as I say, God is good in so many ways. All right, let's keep pulling this around. So um, I liked doing this in the blue. It's fun to kind of do a uh, chromatic color combination and keep it in here. All right, so these guys are good. Right? And notice... I keep moving my piece, and I've mentioned that before in past videos. I want to be able to pull my brush towards me. It's much easier to control your brush if you pull it towards you. And I don't know if you can see, but I am using my pinky as a brace to help me keep higher on the horse here because it's, it's not the easiest piece to work on. So when you have a piece that's a little more difficult to work on, you kind of learn how to use your pinky to kind of help you. And I keep my brush pretty straight up and down so I have more control of the brush and where the bristles are going. I can speed it up or slow it down. Now remember when you're working on this you want to give your bristles time to catch up to you so you don't get little flippy things as I like to call it. So I'll also use my arm as a brace. I see I'm holding my hand back here. Sorry I'm shaking uh, the camera a little bit. So by using my arm as a brace as well I can hold my brush above it and keep steady. Now I'm using my forearm, not my hand, because the hand has so many bones in it, you'll be bumpy. Doesn't mean that I don't sometimes use my hand, because I do, and you will see me do that. But the forearm is easier because you don't have as many bones to deal with that will give you a shaky ride. So remember, whatever I am suggesting, these are simply my experiences with my journey with paint. I will never claim to be the foremost authority on it because I'm not. I am constantly learning. I'm always looking back at books and uh, reading what I the, the books that I have and looking at videos and studying other people's artwork because there's so much to learn. Each and every one of us are on our own journey. And it's really up to each and every one of us to investigate and, and study and see what's out there. Um, 
because there's so much to learn. I never just take it for granted. And you know, what works for one person doesn't always work for another. You have to be able to adjust and adapt and add new information as you go. And sometimes you need to get rid of some information as well that might not, you know, apply anymore. You know, painting is kind of uh, like life, right? Much as anything else we learn, always be open to what is out there. And if you find your passion, you know, something, a gift, whatever gift it may be that God has given you, you know, by all means, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine because anything that I've been given with art is God given. And I always feel very blessed to be able to share um, my knowledge and learn from others. So, neat thing is this, this week, being with my parents and my father and I were able to uh, celebrate our birthdays together. We uh, share a birthday and it's really because of my, my father in so many ways and my grandparents, but especially my father, that I got into rose modeling at a young age. Be thankful for all that you have in life. All right, this is coming around. Okay, so I got very philosophical. Those are my, my uh, philosophical words for today. Now, all right, let's keep coming it around. So with the telemark style, you can get a little more fanciful and uh, out there with your detailing. Styles like Holly and Dolly are a little more rigid in how you detail and how you style things. All right, let's add a nice little chocolate chip here. We'll do a side and then a swivel. All right. Let's come up here. All right. We'll come around this way. And we're going to just kind of finish what we're doing some dots coming up. Oh, hmm. What did I do there? Well, we'll just make a thing out of it. That's all right. Let's give the bridle a little highlights here. Now, if you notice, I pushed the brush away. I did not have as much control, so even I don't always listen to myself. <laughs> but that's okay. All right, let's pull it this way. And pull it this way. And down. So this guy is coming along quite nicely. My Holland doll blue. No, my Dalla blue here. All right. Let's just give this a little detail coming down. A little stripe there. Let's see. You know, the fun thing is you just want to be inventive and make sure when you're doing something, do it so it pleases you. You know, if you don't make yourself happy first, you can't make anybody else happy. And uh, try to be as true to yourself as you can. I try. You know, that's all we can do in life. Boy, I really am philosophical today. <laughs> well, anyway. All right. So here's my detailed dollar horse. You will see this fellow again because I'm going to uh, do a little more work on him. We'll come back. I'll show you how I'm going to transfer on that side. And uh, we'll finish him up. Listen, thank you again for joining me. Remember, it's just paint. God is good. And uh, happy little swirls and all that stuff. All right, take care.